And today we'll be learning about if Linux is unhackable. All right, is that possible? Is Linux an entirely hardened computer system that is not possible for hackers to break into? And I want this to be a really important fundamental lecture to understand all about cybersecurity, right? Whether you're on Windows or whether you're on a Linux computer. And because on one of our videos, we have this video called Five Signs Your Computer Has Been Hacked. There's been a lot of comments stating that Thankfully, I'm using a Linux computer, so I cannot be targeted by the hackers. So the hackers are unable to break into my computers because I'm using Linux. Okay, so we want to look at this at multiple layers of cybersecurity. And the first layer is the physical layer. So if you're using a computer as a consumer to surf the internet, perhaps you're using different Linux distributions to surf the internet, whichever distribution it is, if someone has a physical access to your computer, even if it is locked with a password, all the hacker got to do is to just take out the hard disk drive, plug it into their own computer, and you'll be able to access every single document and files inside the laptop or even your mobile device if they have access to the storage media. So that is the first part, which is the physical tracking of your devices. So if you ever lose your device, right, whether it's a laptop or mobile device, immediately all right, whoever has access, physical access to it, even without a password, they'll be able to take out a hard disk drive, plug it into their own computer, all right? And from there on, they'll be able to access into all of your documents inside your computer system, all right? So the physical protection or, or the physical security of your devices are critical. And the second part, of course, is the layer above it, all right? The layer above it is how we are using the computer system, all right? So there are two main domains of using a Linux computer, right? One is as a consumer. So if you're surfing the internet, you're downloading software into your computer, and you are opening up, say, a PDF document, or you're opening opening up like a Word document and Excel sheets in order for you to complete some tasks, all right? That it could be work-related, school-related, whichever the case is. So you definitely need to open some kind of files, and in order to open them up, you need to have the software, and the software runs on top of the operating system. And if the software is out of date or it is vulnerable to certain type of exploits, in those cases, you are still susceptible to cyber attacks where a reverse shell or some kind of damage against the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of your system can still happen from that software, from that vulnerable software, which is why it is important to always apply updates into computers so that it makes it a lot harder for hackers to break into because of all the security features, protections that come together with those software that will help protect you against those attacks. And the second part, of course, is that you are also subjected to social engineering attacks because you will use your computer to surf the internet, to check on your emails and see if there are new promotions, if there are new e-commerce sites that you want to surf into to purchase some items all right or to check out from certain e-commerce sites in those cases you are also subjected or right, and you're susceptible to phishing attacks where hackers could send you a fake email all right disguising themselves as legitimate businesses and you would still click onto those emails you would still open up the documents all right so again it depends on how you are able to check those emails and verify them all right so again in those cases you are also susceptible to social engineering attacks. So perhaps you log in to a social media site and there is a message telling you that there is a promotion. Or if the hacker send you an email disguising themselves as the bank and telling you that, hey, there is a unauthorized withdrawal of $1,000 and you'll be, you'll be shocked, you'll be surprised, you'll be taken aback and you will really want to click onto the link to verify those claims. In those cases, you may accidentally enter your username and your password and those will get lost and the hackers will try to gain access into your accounts using those usernames and passwords that you've supplied so again we need to verify those all right and in this case whether you're a linux or windows computer you would still be susceptible to social engineering attacks okay and the second point that is critical is if you're using linux systems all right to provide services like a web service, right? Or even as a service that people could access into to look at certain data, certain information, right? Or you're building your own website, whether it's informational or whether there are some sort of payment gateway or shopping cart functions and features that people could check out from. In those cases, you are also subjected to hacking 
right? Because if you look at all of the tutorials that we've done on this channel, you have cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and so on, open web application security project, all those make you susceptible to attacks. Okay, so once again, this is a really important point for us to understand the multiple layers of security in a computer system, whether it is Linux or whether it is Windows. And of course, you'll be saying that because you're using Linux, you have a lower probability of getting hacked because a lot of times the hackers have to spend a tremendous amount of effort in order to build those exploits to break into those systems. And of course, there are more Windows users than Linux users. As a result of that, as they're building those exploits, they target it specifically for Windows devices rather than Linux devices. Because if they're sending over to a million users, there will likely be 900 over 1,000 users or 800 over 1,000 users who are using Windows computer and another 100 over 1,000 of them using Macintosh, all right? And of course, another small one or 2% of users using Linux. So they would definitely want to put the effort into the computer systems or the operating systems that are more likely to be used by the users all right, or by the consumers that they could target and ultimately gain unauthorized access to. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's lecture. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of the questions. And we'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.